Hello and welcome to this week's video. This week I am doing something that is very easy, hands-on, and you can do right in your own kitchen. So let's get started. I'm Elle, your herbalist, with Wild and Rooted Organics, and this week I am showing you something that I do pretty much once a week, and that is making bone broth. Bone broth has a huge following and it's for good reason. Bone broth is wonderfully beneficial for your gut health, your gut lining. Um, it's great at collagen production and natural gelatin. So it's gonna be better than the things you buy in the store. And unfortunately the things in the store kind of are really expensive um, and maybe not always the best ingredients. So. I'm gonna try to show you how I make mine. It's very, very simple. I use um, an Instapot, but you can do it in a crock pot or stove top. So it's accessible to everybody. So let's get started and I'll kind of show you what I do and start with. So I start with roughly two pounds of bones. Um, now, roughly what that ends up to be is two of my packs of bones, which I bought a cow but um, there are a ton of stores that have really high quality bones for sale for affordable. Um, if you are in the Nashville area, I do recommend Sprouts. Um, they have a great grass fed and grass finished um, beef bone for about $12 and it's, it's great quality. Um, brings me the second part on the beef bones. Try to always make sure they are grass fed. Um, you just get more omegas and better marrow and just all over better ingredients. So, two pounds of beef bones for one batch, basically. And then I am using celery. Um, I use, they're very short sticks, so it's probably three or four long sticks. Carrots, I'll use three and I'll use six cloves of garlic. Don't tell my husband and one onion and basically the first step of this is gather all your ingredients and what i'm going to do is i am going to chop this up into probably two inch pieces on the vegetables i'll leave the garlic cloves whole but i will smash them and i will cut the onion in chunks um, and then put the beef bones so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do all of that put them on the pan and i am going to cover them in um, olive oil. I don't recommend seed oils. Seed oils are like very questionable and I'm not a big fan of seed oil. Um, a high quality olive oil will do um, or beef tallow which is what I usually use but unfortunately um, they were sold out of beef tallow and I have ran out of mine so yeah I'm gonna do that and I'll kind of walk you through how to do this and remember it is very simple you can do it on your own and believe me you save a ton of money doing it at home. So, here we go. Okay, so, what I did in that time lapse was I basically cut everything down into like roughly two inch chunks. Um, the reason why you don't want to dice and slice things really small is because at the end of it, you're actually going to be taking all of the vegetables out and it just makes it a lot easier to strain when the pieces are bigger. So what I did was I put everything on a foil lined baking sheet. And this is actually very important. So you want the foil to come up at least over one edge because at the end of this, you're going to be pouring everything off. And if you get your foil too short like this, you lose a lot of the nutrients underneath that foil. So what I'll do is when I'm done roasting this, um, I'll pour it off of this side. So I've thrown everything on a pan. There's no rhyme or reason. I used one onion, three carrots, um, a couple stalks of celery, lots of garlic, and my soup bones are on here. They're like still frozen, so they're chunked together. So I'll probably check it um, halfway through roasting it in the oven and kind of separate them. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to coat it, um, just drizzle some olive oil and what that does is it just helps really amp up the flavor. So I'll do that. And you don't have to be fancy about this. Like, seriously, it's simple. I don't know why they charge so much for it. 
Um, and then what I do, because I really like a really like flavorful kick, is I salt and pepper it very lightly. Um, and there's more steps to this that you'll actually get like better flavor later on, but this is just for the roasting of the bones. So, and um, I do always suggest never ever using table salt um, because the potassium chloride in it is horrible for you, but I always use pink salt. Pink salt is wonderful for you. It doesn't spike um, and it's actually decent for you and it has a ton of trace minerals and you can buy it everywhere for just a little more than what you buy table salt for. So salt and pepper and what I do, Nikki Watkins, best pepper in the world. Um, so I'm going to put this in an oven that's at 400 degrees and I am going to roast it I think for 40 minutes. I'll double check that. Um, So yeah, I roast it for 40 minutes. Um, I have one that I do for chicken that's 25 minutes, so that's why I was having a double check. Um, and you can totally do this with chicken too. Uh, just when you do your chicken, roast the vegetables first for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then put the chicken carcasses on and roast for another 20 minutes. So that's really the difference between beef and chicken. Um, when you're doing the beef bones, you, you go ahead and roast all of it for the entire 40 minutes. Um, so I'm going to pop this in a 400 degree oven for 40 minutes and it's going to get really nice, fragrant, and there's going to be lots of fat dripping off of it, which makes me happy. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next part. This will come in like literally three seconds because it's magic. Y'all, I just had this all on video, step by step, how I got here and my phone rang. And I lost the video. So I'm going to explain it all over again and unfortunately we don't get the visual of me putting everything in the pot but it's okay because I can explain it. So what I did first was after the roasted bones and vegetables came out of the oven I scraped everything off that pan, oil, fat, all of it into this instapot. And then what I threw in there was a half a teaspoon of salt about 10 to 12 peppercorns because the peppercorns drain out really well and three bay leaves and then I threw in a mix of herbs. Now this blend I'm particularly using more for the mineral basis. I change it up um, pretty much every one I do um, but this one I really wanted to focus on getting the most minerals as possible. So I threw in quite a bit of herbs and what I used was nettles. Um, I use burdock. Um, burdock is a wonderful blood purifier and just overall purifier. Nettles is really high in minerals. Um, and then I threw in seaweed. Um, I love seaweed, particularly for the iodine. Iodine is a very necessary component in our lives and a lot of people, unless you are eating continuous amounts of seafood, um, a lot of people are very low in iodine and iodine actually has been, um, well, low iodine has actually been linked to many um, estrogen based cancers as well, like breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So um, keeping your iodine levels up in a healthy range um, can actually help prevent that in the long run. Um, another thing I added in was mushrooms. So I put in some reishi mushrooms and some shiitake mushrooms. Um, I just really like mushrooms in general and I think they're great for overall health. And then I threw in some goji berries because goji berries are wonderful for your liver. And um, I'm just somebody that always wants to support a very happy, healthy liver and gojis are a really easy way to do that. And then I also added in some turmeric because turmeric is really anti-inflammatory. Um, so this blend is just kind of like the kitchen sink. <laughs> um, but with the minerals and the burdock and all of that, it's very, very focused on like that mineral basis, especially with the seaweed and adding seaweed in here is a really cool way to kind of add a salty flavor without like overdoing it on the salt. Now, when I added salt, I only use pink salt. Pink salt is much healthier for you, like I said earlier in the video, than regular table salt. Um, pink salt is just more of a natural form. It contains a lot of trace minerals. And I'm a person that is obviously very focused on having 
a mineral rich diet. And just by adding herbs in here is a really easy way to incorporate it without having to like drink a tea or make an infusion. Um, and I really love adding herbs to it. It's really, really cool. Um, but I'm a nerd, so we got that. But anyways, so um, in the Instapot I'm using, I believe it's like a six quart Instapot. There is a max line and it's really hard to see now because there's herbs. Um, but yeah, so there's a max line in here and what I do is I pour boiling or at least very hot water in here to make the stew and I fill it all the way up to that line. It just is the most bang for your buck. And the reason why I love to use the Instapot is really you're not losing a lot to evaporate evaporation so I'm not having to add like any extra water. And then to really, really bring out the flavors, I added one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I just find that it really helps balance the taste and it's just good for you. It's good for digestion and everything else and it helps really break down those um, like fats because it's just science. Anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously put this all in here, which it already is, and then I'm gonna turn on my Instapot for 90 minutes on high pressure. Um, now, if you are doing it on a stove top, what I would do is bring it to a low boil for two hours and then turn it down very, very low with a lid on it. And I would check it probably every couple of hours to add some extra water. Um, but I would cook it for at least eight hours altogether, if not overnight. When I cook mine overnight, what I do is I leave it on until I go to bed at night and then I turn it off and then I turn it right back on the second I wake up in the morning and let it continue to cook for a couple hours just to make sure like any bacteria that could have possibly developed when it was off overnight is completely killed. Um, that's just my way of doing it. This is no way food safety advice. That's just what I do if I make it that way. Another great way is to do it in the crock pot and for that I would at least say eight to ten hours. Um, again, checking your water level. Never feel bad about adding water, that's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna put this on there and then I'm going to go over some of the benefits and kind of the final steps, so. Okay, so while we wait for this to cook, um, I will go over just kind of what I use bone broth for. Um, because I think everybody's probably heard of it at this point, but I might as well explain why I use bone broth. So why I originally started using bone broth was I have obviously and probably always will be on a large gut health kick. Um, and with bone broth, bone broth is really, really good for your gut health because for so many reasons, really. Um, but the main reason is that it contains like healthy amino acids and gelatin and it's really just great for soothing that digestive tract to allow healing. It's really, really anti-inflammatory as well, which is great because a lot of people's digestive system is inflamed. Like whether or not like you are consciously aware of it, unfortunately with the foods we eat today, um, especially like spicy foods and stuff like that and stuff that has a ton of pesticides or hormones, our gut lining is really inflamed pretty often. Um, so that was one of the main reasons I started using it. Um, another great reason is I started using this too because of the benefits for hair and skin health. Um, I don't have fake nails, never probably will. Um, and for me having like a strong healthy nail is very important because I am always digging in the dirt or in the garden and they break. And I've noticed since I started using bone broth, it works a lot better than like any supplement I've ever used before. Another good thing about bone broth, especially when you're making it, you're able to kind of control everything that goes in it. And I find that you are able to provide yourself with a higher quality bone broth when you do it yourself. And it's not hard, like it's literally very simple. I do it once a week. Um, yeah, and it's affordable. I mean, you pretty much have most of the ingredients already. Um, a lot of people have carrots already, or you can grow them. But yeah, and then the thing that I found that I also liked about doing the bone broth was I was able to add herbs. And by adding the herbs, I'm really able to like take my health to the next step because I'm already a person that is like 
making stuff for a ton of other people at all times. Like I'm using plants in many different ways. I'm using like plants topically. I'm doing infusions. I'm making blends and like for myself, bone broth was just a really easy way to get my own herbs in. And like that being said, like bone broth is very versatile. Like you don't have to just sit there and drink a cup of bone broth. Like that's just, I get it. Like some people might like that, but that's not something I quite enjoy. So what I use bone broth for is I actually take it when it's done and freeze it into two cup increments. And I will throw it into any soups that I'm making, or I will throw it into like, if I'm making rice or quinoa or something that's going to absorb like all that liquid. And it's a really, really easy way to kind of get those nutrients and those minerals in without like having to do an extra step in your day. Um, I vary my herb recipe by like what I'm obviously looking for. Um, Minerals are very something I'm focused on right now. Um, minerals are great for certain types of things that we are exposed to on a daily basis. And if I say it, I'll get shadow banned, but it has to do with long towers that people put up. But anyways, so yes, it's great for anti-radiation and stuff like that because that is unfortunately something that we are exposed to on a daily basis. And doing bone broth this way is just a really simple way to not only take care of myself, but promote my own beauty and to get herbs in, in a very simple way. And like I can do, so I can do this bone broth and I can freeze it, okay? And like maybe I do one that's like mineral based and then maybe I'll do one that's immune based. So if I've been around somebody that's sick, I can just take one of those little packs out of the freezer and make myself a soup or something out of it and get that added benefit of those minerals or the immune vitamins or whatever's in there at that time. Um, so another really great thing about bone broth is it's a really easy way to hydrate and balance your electrolytes, especially living in the South. It's hot, sticky, you are sweating all the time, literally like May rolls around and you don't stop sweating until September, it's just hot. Uh, <laughs> so it's a really cool way to not only establish like your salts and your mineral salts, but it, you can also establish those electrolytes um, that way in a very simple way. And you can do ones that are like chicken flavored. So if you like chicken soup or something like that. Um, another thing is like I said, like bone broth itself without even the added herbs is really high in minerals. So it contains silica, magnesium, um, glucosamine, um, gelatin, which I know isn't like a mineral, but it's still a really good thing. So it's keeping your bones healthy, your joints healthy, it's keeping your hair healthy. Um, it's just overall really good. And it has those amino acids that we are needing in our daily life, whether you work out or whether you're running after a toddler, like you still need those amino acids. So yeah, so that is like the middle part. And then I will film what I do afterwards. Um, it's really simple though, after all of this, um, you'll see I just strain it and then I bottle it. I put it in um, half gallon mason jars and kind of let it cool. And then from that, I will actually uh, put it into like freezer, uh, the seal bags. I don't know what they're called, uh, food seal bags. And I do it in two cup increments and pop them in the freezer, lay them flat so I can take them out at any time. Um, you are free to drink it. Um, you can make soup out of it right away if that's something you're looking to do. Um, I will say like one thing, some people like to like get it cold to get the fat out. I'm not one of those people. I think we need all the healthy fats we can. And yeah, fat's good for you. I don't know who came up with the rule that you're not allowed to have fat, but especially as women, women actually need a dose of fat in their food, whether, but try to like healthy fat, of course, and animal fat, animal fat, something we all function off of. So yeah, so I will continue the video. I'm doing it in segments. And I noticed from watching my last one that my shirt is actually like dirty. Um, I'm sorry, I was grinding up cornmeal earlier today. Um, I am weird and grind my own cornmeal and it just got all over me and I did not notice until I looked at the video. But yeah. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, um, so my Instapot has gone for 90 minutes. I let it do probably a 15 minute natural release and then did the rest manual release, which if you have an Instapot, you know what that means. If not, don't worry about it. Um, so, and I will make sure this video goes like fast through the like me planning to make a huge gigantic mess in a moment, but um, bear with me for a moment. So, um, the Instapot has finished. I'll move it over so you can kind of see what it looks like. And basically it looks like a super yummy deep broth. Um, so on before you prepare to like bottle or like consume, maybe not even consume, um, you're going to find the bones in here and make sure to pop out the marrow because the marrow sometimes gets stuck in the bones and you want all that marrow. So what I'm going to do is I will speed it up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But um, I have a very high tech system here. It's called a bowl and a strainer. I know, right? Actually, this is called a well, it's a strainer, but it's also called a colander for those that don't know. And if you're in my family, you know what I'm talking about. It's a colander. Actually, the one that's a colander is the one that drains spaghetti noodles, but this is more of a strainer. But that's the daily lesson. Um, so, yeah. So, I have a strainer and a bowl. And I have a very large mason jar. You don't have to use a mason jar. You can use any type of jar that you've got. I just have a lot of these laying around. So what I will do is just basically pour the contents in here, strain out all of the stuff, and go forward. So um, yeah, here we go. spooned it in um that's just because i'm very prone to large messes <laughs> in the kitchen and then i set this which is the leftover in a second bowl and what i'll do is i'll just let it slowly drain and the stuff that comes off of this i'll actually end up drinking tonight so i'm not going to put it in there anyways so if you are somebody that does not want the extra fat and i totally understand and don't judge you for that at all um, what you'll do at this step is you will go ahead and stick, it, let it cool down a little bit and then stick it in the fridge overnight. And in the morning, you'll be able to scrape the fat right off. Easy peasy, good to go. Um, if you do want to leave the fat on, um, still let it cool. Just don't scrape the fat off. Um, very simple. Um, I like to really like mix it up after it's been cold. So I will like take the fat out, like chop it up into small pieces or whatever and stick it back in just to make sure that I'm getting um, fat in every like two cup increment that I save. Um, so yeah, it's really, really simple. It's not hard or it's not high tech. It's very affordable, accessible and easy to do. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, but yeah. And if you are somebody that's like me, um, if you want to find something to do with your leftovers, um, let me know. I will, because it has animal fat, you can't really compost it, but um, I just tend to throw it way deep in the woods and something eats it. So there's that. I don't know if it's exactly the most reasonable or resourceful but it's just I mean hey it goes to feed an animal and it's not completely wasted 
Um, I am a firm believer in always giving back to the earth in some shape or form, and this is something that nourishes my body, so therefore the least I can do is give it back um, in some form or another. Um, I do know that there are some people that actually take like the bones and uh, ground them down and give them to chickens. I don't have chickens, even though I really wish I did. Um, but yes, so this is just really simple, easy bone broth. And this will last me a whole week if I just drink it without even freezing it. But because I freeze it, I can use it anytime I want. And um, unless you are somebody that's like actually like has a like a serious gut condition um, or something along those lines that is really needing like aggressive healing, you don't need to have bone broth every day. You totally can, and that's not an issue. Um, and I didn't see that you would have any negative effects from that, but as long as you're getting bone broth a few times a week where you're getting that like natural boost, I would do something more along those lines. But that has been my video on bone broth. I'm going to allow this to cool a little bit and then I'm going to actually freeze it in two cup increments and put it in the freezer to save for later. And whatever drains off of this, I'm gonna end up drinking tonight. Um, you actually get quite a bit. So I say let it drain, I don't know, an hour or two. Um, there's a lot that comes off those herbs and all of that. So yeah, that's my video on bone broth and thank you for watching and I hope everybody has a great week. And happy planting.